Filling the tables is a regular task at the avenue. We increase the amount of food as winter draws closer. Not only does this benefit the birds, but it benefits us too, as it keeps the birds on site for us to enjoy. Birds are not the only visitors to our tables. Having never known red squirrels in this area, this controversial grey is a welcome visitor as far as I'm concerned. We're on the avenue this morning doing a ringing session. Here is a long-tailed tit, a beautiful little bird that lives on the avenue in good numbers. Here is one we've just put a ring on. Hopefully we'll see him or her next year if it survives what could be a very cold winter. Just spending a little bit of time down here. Um, one sec. This bird is often overlooked by bird watchers, but any creature that survives and thrives has to be admired. It adapts well to its surroundings and has reached population levels of around 2.7 million birds in Britain. Not much life today, isn't there? Bad. No, it's this time of day, your best, it's best early morning. It's your best time to come bird watching. But it's better than being stuck indoors, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Not better than playing on WWE. Here <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Heron. Something on my island with the heron. More in. Is it? Right. See that one? This mallard's enjoying an early morning bath. It's using oil from its preen glands to keep its feathers nice and watertight. This tufted duck is diving, looking for food in the mud at the bottom of the pond. Mute swans aren't such a common visitor to the avenue. They visit from nearby Grassmoor Country Park where they breed. Teal start to arrive around October time and stay with us for the winter period. Numbers can reach somewhere between 50 and 60 birds. The signs of autumn are starting to show. Berries are ripening, leaves are turning colour Fungi is everywhere you look. You know, it doesn't matter what time of year it is, the robin is always happy to sing a song. We spotted these goldfinches feeding at the top of this alder. It's always worth looking at these small flocks at this time of year, because amongst the flock was the avenue's first siskin of the year. and flying in a grey heron and now he starts his hunt for his breakfast Dad, do you think that grey heron seen something? Could have done, it's moving down the bank, I'm sure it's seen something Yeah, it's got his eyes definitely fixed on something Now look this time Dad No, not this time 
Well, there he goes. I bet I'll find food somewhere else, though. Do you? Hopefully. And through that mist, you should just be able to make out a male gadwall. And there's a coot, feeding in a very similar way to the tufted duck earlier, diving for its food. And there's a black-headed gull preening, zipping up all its feathers to keep them in fantastic flying condition. And over on the far bank, pied wagtail. We've got some mutes on taking off. Just listen to the noise of those wings. They can't quite gain enough height on the first turn to get over the trees at the far side. They do a full circle around the ponds and on the second attempt they've got enough height and away they go. Heron, tufted duck, moorhens, coots, black headed gulls. We have a lock up where we keep all the tools. Uh, actually, inside lock up, not very really glamorous, but just the job. And this morning, uh, it's 31st of October, it's quite a chilly, foggy morning. Uh, we've got a work party on site. I don't know how many people are coming, but this is what our job is today. We're looking for harvest mouse nests. Now this nest in particular is a breeding nest. Um, you can tell that by its size, about the size of a cricket ball, tennis ball. Um, if it was a non-breeding nest, it'd be a lot smaller than that, about the size of a golf ball. The insides they reinforce with leaves uh, and it will be attached about 12 inches to 20 inches off the floor, deep down in grassy locations. Uh, this one's a couple of years old now that we found, but uh, still in not bad condition. And it'll be lined inside, um, with thistle down, bird feathers, that kind of thing. Good bit of feast engineering. And here's one of our volunteers looking for a nest. Any luck yet, Angela? And here's Brian and Jeff looking in the thick stuff. It can be backbreaking work, and some of these sessions can last four or five hours. However you like. I'm going that way. We had a great morning and discovered three nests. Here's a picture of one of them. And after our successful morning, everybody settles down for a snack and a chat. Already starting to get dark. The clocks went back last night. Um, and this is the first widgeon that I've seen on the site this winter. <laughs> 